Welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. Today's utensil. If yesterday is about cooking, this one is about the dining. And Chinese dominant, like number one. If you only have one utensil to eat, well, I mean, one container to eat. Let's put it because you do, you do have chopstick. That's the constant. But if one thing you have one container to eat, it gotta be bowl. Cannot be plate for Chinese. Um, I eat from a bowl, like till today. <laughs> that's my <laughs> that's my lifelong habit. It's so convenient. And just look at the, the shape of the wonk and uh, bowl. They are both half dome. So Chinese cooking and dining containers, both are this half dome shape. And for me, that, that's my default. Like I came to this world seeing eating from the bowl, cooking from the wok, and that's a default setting. I never thought about it. And when I came to uh, the US and then experience the different cooking utensils and also China open up and they have all kinds of cooking utensils that, that divers get the blending the fusion of a cooking culture as well. Um, that I still think bowls are better shaped to contain food. It can hold soup. It can hold your salad. It's universal. You can put everything in there and things won't fall out. And the way you're eating from a bowl is simply you hold it to your mouth and scoop it in. It's the efficiency of eating. Instead of doing that plate, fork, and uh, knife thing, it's so... I'm not going to... It's a different culture's way of approaching dining. I mean, it looks elegant. It looks great. A bowl, eating from a bowl doesn't look good, but it's efficient. And for people who are hungry, for centuries, for millenniums, eating efficiently is critical, right? So bowl, I would argue, is the most efficient eating utensil out there, all right? One, okay, three parts in one. And if we group them, we can see two parts, the top and the bottom. The top, you can see it's almost looking similar, right? It's this curvature shape um twice but with different flavor and if we you know refer back to different chinese characters or icon they came from diff totally different resources uh, i mean sources the left one is a crescent moon wonder if you can see that it's possible right the right side is a neat person sitting on the hill so apparently ancient chinese before the invention of table and chair the you know, ergonomic designs of uh, furniture of our contemporary living, uh, people sitting on their heels comfortably because that's, that's what they are born to. They have to do that every day, right? Even talking, chatting in their living room, in their dining room, sitting on the heels. Nobody think bending on their knees for a long time and sitting on heels would be a, a trouble <laughs> as for our contemporary people. But here is how you see this image. This big curve is the back torso. The front is the arm or the front part of the body. And then this is the knee. This band is the knee. And then the calves and this elongated downward pointing thing is the upstanding heels. So you're supposed to have your butt touching your heels. That's the way you sit. And probably like for people like as you get older, you probably as not bendy. Uh, probably you can put some pillows in between to make it easier. But that's the posture people use a lot back then. So we have the crescent moon. We have a person sitting on the hills. Um, I mean, Chinese create a character for that. So that means it's one of the most common human posture out there. Both the universal the universality of this two means curvature means bendy okay the bottom is the utensil itself it's categorical to say we're talking about the utensil the container that got curvature in it and this utensil simply is you can view it as a tall glass a wine glass with two fingers uh, the thumb and the rest of the fingers that's the two 
strokes over here next to it. You're supposed to hold it like that, drink it, right? So that's simply ca categorical to mean this is um, utensil. You can use it to drink or eat, whatever. Then the top gives you the specific um, shape of the utensil. That means it's curvature, it's curved utensil. And that's the bow shape because the bow, the key of the bow is to, to, to make this half dome shape. Okay, as is the dominant um, eating utensil or container in Chinese dining experience, just like a walk, we have a ton of expressions from what, but mostly it's actually related to make a living because eating and the living are too closely related, uh, major aspects of our lives, at least back then, right? To, huh, if you learn Chinese of one of the first things, it's actually a local expression is to, instead of asking you, how are you, right? How are you is a general question Chinese will ask specifically, have you eaten? Like, 吃了吗? Right? That's the greeting. That's how important <laughs> eating is, right? 饭碗, uh, is rice bowl. I mean, classical, we use bowl to hold rice. And rice is, I guess, one of the dominant <laughs> uh, grain, grain food, a uh, carb source for Chinese. 饭碗, okay. 铁饭碗, now we add an iron. Bowl. Now, our rice bowls are mostly made of uh, porcelains, right? But we made it, if we made it into the iron, it means it's unbreakable, it's anti-fragile. <laughs> not anti-fragile, actually, it's different. It's, it's sturdy, it's not going to break if you drop it. So Chinese use tie, fan wan. Fan wan means make a earning, make ends meet so you can bring food on the table. And Tiefama means you have a stable source of income, means you are hired by state-owned enterprise. In the context of China, that if you're, you're not work for the private company, if you work for the government, then that's regarded as Tiefama. Iron, rice bowl, <laughs> Jin Fan Wan. Okay, now we upgrade from iron to gold. If it's a gilded ice, rice bowl. It's almost equivalent to English version of somebody born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Kind of similar statement, except the Chinese go further, more expensive material, the gold is there. So gold rice bowl means you have a super high per paying, high income job. Okay, yi wan shui duan ping. Okay, one bowl of water. Imagine the water is kind of a top to the rim and you have to hold it uh, flat. Uh, you cannot tilt because it, it's going to spill. So yi wan shui duan ping, use this physical sense of holding a full bowl of water. You have to hold it a flat, like a perfectly flat, meaning you have to treat everybody to the same standard. You have to be fair. You cannot play favorism. So yi wan shui duan ping is almost like a, Whenever we say yi wan shui duan ping, it means you cannot play favorism. You have to treat everybody equally. Hold your bow flat. <laughs> All right, so that's one. And here, one. I don't know which, because things in China were not branded. Branding was, was carried by some restaurants or some pharmacies in China. If we have some long, like centuries old brand over there. But things like everyday item, commodity, bowls, this is the most universal rice bowl Chinese have. I grew up so much with this bowl. Even if there is diversity now, we have all kinds of rice bowls. But this is the one that's dominant um, among all the rice bowls. This is the look. And if you see here, we have some bad image, bad. Fu, because of the pronunciation, is associated with uh, another fu, means happiness. You have, and happiness actually made uh, of something related to eating as well. Like you have this balance of food. You, nobody go hungry. I don't have the dragon. So dragon is Chinese ambition, you know, triggering. <laughs> I guess when you eat to the very bottom of your rice bowl, you see the dragon, you kind of 
subconsciously be reminded that one day you want to soar up high, you want to transcend of your current living condition, you want a social clan climb uh, to get closer to the you know central government a ruler class or whatever you know uh, represented by dragon which is the one and only ruler in china you want to get close to that anyways so this became the classical the most famous rice bowl in china there you go thank you for your time see you another day